Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn. And my name is Patrick Ferry. And welcome to our show. Well, guys, we're back this week together, Pat, and uh, we got some exciting news to talk about. Yeah, a lot going on. It's good to be back. I know it was, uh, appreciate all the, all the fans being with us and, and tuning in, but that was definitely a different, uh, different kind of filming uh, style we did there, Austin, uh, you know, filming at separate times. Yeah, I think it worked out pretty well. I know we kind of changed up how we, you know, normally do it, but uh yeah, last week was a huge week, so I'm glad we were able to, uh, you know, come together, kind of, uh, you know, do it separately and, and kind of divide and conquer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it, and it looks like it uh, appears to be even, a, you know, as big, if not a bigger week here that we're about to talk about. And, uh, you know, hopefully for this whole uh, YA season. Yeah, it's definitely shaping up that way. You know, we got, got a lot of players uh, changing clubs and kind of getting into it's a bigger team, so to speak, and uh, it's creating some great storylines to follow. So to uh, go into our episode today, we have we want to talk about a player in Germany who uh, scored his first Bundesliga goal this weekend. And one of our uh, own Yaz making history with his Serie A debut. Hard to figure out who that is. And uh, finally, we have another player who uh, looks like he'll have a decision on his hands this week over two world-class clubs. So uh, all that and more in today's episode. So to start off today's episode, we got to go over to Germany and talk about Gio Reyna. So Gio Reyna, Pat, this week started Dortmund's first game in the Bundesliga against Gladbach and scored his first goal. So Dortmund won this game 3-0 and Gio led off the scoring for them. Uh, you know, getting a nice ball kind of crossed in from Emre Chan. Uh, didn't really settle it great, but had a nice touch to uh, Jude Bellingham, who then really put a, a nice ball into Gio, who turned on it and finished right across the goalkeeper into the net. 1-0 for Dortmund. And, uh, yeah, celebrations were on, Pat. And, uh, you know, the team got very hype. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks like it. They're all kind of surrounding uh, Gio and energized. And he just seems like a, almost like a young general in the field, Austin, just the way he... Uh, interacts you can see um, his verbal communication and, and pointing out directions and and just being so confident um, you know at such a young age is really impressive and we've come to see and especially in this game where he just kind of showed off his his strength his skill vision all that combined and you can see uh, him and Holland certainly have a, a pretty cool uh, partnership and uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. like a bromance in a way <laughs> yeah right we'll have to figure out some uh, special name for them but uh yeah, for sure. You know, like you said, all that was on display in this game. And, you know, going into the second half, uh, he actually drew the penalty that uh, led to Dortmund's second goal, which Holland took over uh, Jaden Sancho. They had a nice little uh, exchange over the penalty. But, you know, that's another um, goal that, you know, Gio helped set up. And, uh, you know, another difference in this game, I should say, that he made for Dortmund. So, uh Looking at his game, you know, at, in retrospect um, and, and um, you know, recapping it, he went 29 for 29 passing on the day. So, you know, that's those are pretty good numbers for a 17-year-old in the Bundesliga. Oh, the 100% Austin. It, exactly, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was just a really good, I would say, clean professional performance from Gio. Um, you know, he really did a good job taking care of possession. Um, you know, had some passes where uh, – you know, his vision, like you said, Pat, was was really on display. And, uh, you, you know, you could really just see, a, a, I, I hate to say it, but kind of like a world-class player or just, you know, a, a, you know, a Bundesliga caliber player, uh, you know, in the making. And, uh, yeah, it was just a really good, clean overall game. Um, and, Pat, I think, you know, this will be the first of many starts we'll see for Gio in the Bundesliga this season. Yeah, and so so I guess just in terms of Dortmund, obviously being such a high high caliber team with uh, um, obviously uh, Royce and Brandt and some of those other players, and um, obviously it seems like the manager and uh, 
just just everyone's kind of played in the favor with with Reyna in in terms of his his attitude and his skill set moving forward, like you said. But do you see any uh, cause for maybe some substitute appearances here or there, or do you think he's really kind of taken this year almost to to say, hey, I'm I'm here, um, I'm I'm that next kind of Pulisic uh, that Dortmund has, and then I'm taking that spot. Yeah, I mean, you know. Scoring a goal and drawing a penalty that led to another goal, I think will definitely do him a lot of favors in Favre's eyes. Um, you know, I think that's the biggest thing. Now he's scored two goals in two games to start, you know, Dortmund's competitive competitive season. So with that being said, I think he's in the starting lineup for now. And I think you're going to see that continue. I really do. I think next week you'll see him start Dortmund's game and, you know, the two players you mentioned, Pat, were on the bench for this game, uh, Julian Brandt and Marco Royce. And that was kind of, uh, you know, the two players that occupied both of their positions were 17-year-olds. It was Jude Bellingham and, and Gio Reyna. So I do think, you know, there will be a lot of turnover throughout the season and, and Gio will definitely, you know, make some substitute appearances. But I think he's, he's going to be in the lineup until, you know, he has a bad game or kind of picks up a knock or you know, one of those other players really comes on and makes a, a huge impact and kind of, um, you know, unseats him, so to speak. But yeah, I think another thing that we should mention in this game too, that, that I guess affects Gio Reyna's potential playing uh, minutes this, this season, uh, Torgan Hazard picked up an injury. So Torgan Hazard in this game was playing as a left wing back um, because Rafael Guerrero has been, been out injured and, uh, Dorman really don't have a backup left back at the moment. Uh, you know, when Torgan Hazard went down, they brought in, brought on Felix Paslock, who used to be uh, Christian Pulisic's old friend. Oh, yeah, that's right. U19. So it was kind of interesting seeing him come on uh, and play with Reyna, which, you know, he came on and played with Pulisic uh, in the past. So, yeah, I think with, with Hazard out, that only pretty much leaves uh, Marco Royce and Julian Brandt to, to really kind of pick up the slack and in, in midfield and in the same positions that, you know, Gio Reyna plays. So I do think Gio Reyna is in for a lot of playing time, uh, definitely in the beginning part of the season. Yeah. I mean, that sounds fantastic. Um, I feel like uh, a lot of, a lot of people could, could kind of see the greatness there, but um, you know, that we're, we're actually, you know, seeing it unfold before our eyes here um, with, with the start here. I mean, it's pretty unreal, especially when you see of uh, see on how he's come on so quickly. And obviously, from from the national perspective, uh, things have been on hold here. But um, even even back from a year a year now, um, you know, not even really just oh, kind of not in the conversation on the outside, but certainly a uh, full fledged. Uh, you know, looks like a, it looks like a starter here if he's he's dominating. Um, you know. You know, in in the Bundesliga here, if he can continue that that form there, there's no reason where you know he can really intertwine so well with uh, you know Pulisic and and um, you know some of our other players there. Yeah, and I you know he's really at the age that Pulisic was when he broke into the national team and really led us for you know the last World Cup qualifying period. So I definitely think you know it if not in this next window where we see international games played, I do think before world cup qualifying and at least during, you know, before the world cup, you'll see him become a starter for the U S I don't think that's uh, too crazy to say. And I think that's well-deserved to be completely honest. So yeah, definitely something to keep, keep our eyes on Pat as uh, you know, we, we keep hearing whispers about an international window coming up here in the fall, but uh, I haven't really heard any concrete, news on that yet so uh, i don't know pat have you really heard anything on uh you know the U- usmnt playing this fall yeah not not concrete it's, it's it's such a strange time um you know for a lot of the national uh you know sport and teams and, and sport uh in terms of this year it, it almost seems right. like uh, almost a wash uh and and that maybe at the end of the year they'll, they'll have some camps or pick it up and then and really have some of those games in 2021 but it's very interesting that you know you did see um, for the past, what was it two two weeks ago? I believe some of the uh, the European uh, games going on. So that, right. was, that was intriguing. Yeah, that was yeah, that was interesting. I didn't really hear much about it until it happened, and then it was like, right. oh, yeah, the world's kind of getting on with the whole virus thing, like, and we're still kind of stuck in this weird state. So uh, yeah, I guess that's all for Geo today, Pat. Let's move over to another big performance and uh, big storyline for this week. 
That's right, Austin. Like you kind of alluded to, I'm sure everybody could have guessed who this player is, and that's uh, Weston <laughs> McKinney uh, over with uh, Juventus. Um, we'll definitely get used to you know combining those uh, words together. It's just fantastic. And again, had his first start there, which is pretty historic, and a three nothing win against uh, Sampdoria there. So um, you know, I, I believe you know some of the other notable players in, in Serie A were um, you know Michael Bradley. Uh, Alexi Lalas and even uh, Aguchi Anelu for a uh, you know, brief stint that we knew him at, uh, at Milan there. Um, so there's been a, quite a few other uh, players there, a small selection, but he joins uh, you know history there, especially being that high caliber of a club with Juventus, um, you know, something we, we really haven't seen before. So I want to kind of give him props there, Austin, and I want to get your thoughts on that in terms of the history. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely a, a big historic moment. You know, when he signed for the club, I think we were both uh, ecstatic and really excited to see kind of what he could make at Juventus and if he could, you know, propel himself into that uh, starting lineup and become kind of a consistent uh, player for them. I think that's the goal. And I think he should be aiming very high in, in this move and uh, it's deserved too. I think we saw that today from this performance, but I'll let you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. What you said, perfect segue diving into that performance there um, for the most part, um, especially if you caught the highlights, um, you know, McKinney had some, some really great moments and almost fit in pretty seamlessly uh, with the team. And, and you could kind of see some of those skills and, in moments of brilliance from Schalke where there were very few and limited playing. And uh, again, I don't want to harp too negative on, on Schalke, but just uh, not getting the, I guess, as many opportunities as he would with Juventus and in dominating possession and, and really being in control of the game. So it was great to kind of see McKinney on the other end of that. Um, Cause you could even say from a national team perspective, when he was coming on and in that Saracen era that we really weren't even besides maybe the Caribbean islands, even dominating possession. Then it was more kind of, scrambling so being in a, in a system here where he's playing with Ronaldo uh, you could kind of see during this performance where um, you know he was energetic lively at the midfield with Rabio and and other class players um, you really knew what his role was where um, he was sliding um, you know all over the pitch uh, winning tackles and and you know if he were to lose the ball just just kind of bullying people off and you could kind of see that that physicality and strength that he's really developed in the Bundesliga and with his athleticism, um, you know, in frame there has, has just got ability to kind of body uh, players off there. Um, so again, he did have some moments, Austin, where um, I think it was towards the, the second half end of the game, the 70 something minute where it was a corner and him yeah. and Benucci uh, both went up, um, you know, really high up in the air there. And um, eventually, uh, you know, kind of poked around, but McKinney got his foot to it. Uh, the goalie saved it. And, yeah, Benucci ended up kind of tapping it in there um, and then was also involved in a few other uh, you know, attempts where I think there was another corner and the ball kind of dribbled out to him, um, kind of where that, that garbage player is. You're, you're collecting the garbage outside the 18. And <laughs> McKinney had a – it was, it was a the ball kind of bobbling in the air there, and, and it's a difficult shot to, to perfect, but had it on target. And, uh, yeah, again, just looked pretty aggressive. Um, you know, had pretty high success in terms of pass rates. I know we can kind of dive into that a little bit more. I think it was over 90%, but uh, nonetheless, um, it, was a, it was a very solid performance from Weston. Yeah, I was able to watch the, the whole game, and he was very impressive in my opinion. Um, obviously, there are some nerves to start the game. Uh, it took him, I would say, a good 10 to 15 minutes to really kind of settle in and, and feel comfortable. And to be fair, Juventus haven't really played too many preseason games this season, so it, it was definitely you know a quick – I guess, preseason and learning experience for him to kind of get integrated with the team. And I think the, you know, the further into the game, the more he grew into the game. And uh, yeah, like you said, Pat, it was really good defensively, had some, some nice side tackles and uh, I guess, how would you say it? Aggressive uh, defensive plays. And uh, I thought in possession, he was fine too. I know, you know, Pirlo said something and I think Pat, you got the quote a little later on. Uh, about, you know, he could do better in the buildup and things of that nature. But, uh, you know, there was only one or two moments where he really, uh, I, I think he lost position like twice and, and kind of got caught out, uh, you know, in, in a bad, um, in a bad way, so to speak. And, uh, you, you know, just didn't look good for those like one or two moments. But other than that, I thought it was a really, really good performance from him. I thought he did a really good job linking possession and kind of just, 
you know, he played a lot of safe passes, um, but at the same time, that's kind of how Juventus or Juventus needed to play uh, this game to defeat Sampdoria. Um, this was not a team that, uh, you know, offered a lot of offensive threat. So they kind of just had to um, be conservative and kind of uh, pick their moments and, and break them down. And that's what they really did in this game. So I thought it was a great, great performance from him. And uh, the fans really thought so too, the Juventus fans. So uh, yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see uh, Wesson getting a lot of love from the fans and and people really kind of recognize not only himself but just representing the U.S. and and seeing some of these these players um, come into big club situations and really kind of perform and deliver. Um, kind of has that American grit um, in that mentality. Um, but yeah, again, just uh, going back to that that quote, and you kind of summed up very well there, uh, just in terms of uh, you know. The, the build up build up play, but uh, Pirlo's quote essentially said here that McKenny is, is better than others physically because he come came from Germany. Um, you know he could have done better because he did something wrong in the in the building phase, but it was his first game and we can forgive him. So that's kind of funny um, at the end. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean I, again, it, he's he's a young player. It's his first game, and um, you know you're always every player is going to have a few moments and. And again, I, I cannot criticize one of the, the best players in the world, but uh, Ronaldo wasn't on you know his top level uh, today and had a few <laughs> blunders as well. But again, I'm just getting used to that that Juventus style in Syria. Um, you know, definitely different. Um, you know, coming from the Bundesliga, but you could see that that physicality and, and uh, you know, kind of I guess that bullying mentality that uh, McKenny developed over there is really helping um, in terms of being able to retain. The, the ball in possession and, and not kind of be weak and losing it, getting knocked off, I think is, is really important quality. And, and that the other parts will come and um, come to him, especially playing with high level players, training at, you know, top notch facilities and learning from some of the best. Um, I think that will really come uh, pretty easy to him. And I think he, he seems to be a very quick learner. Yeah, for sure. He's got such a great mentality and, and attitude about the way he carries himself. So I definitely think, you know, uh, things will work out. And I think he'll, he'll really take to this culture. It seems like he's already doing that. So uh, for sure. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention too, real quick, Pat, is kind of the formation that uh, Juventus played today. And that's a, a five, four, one, but it was really interesting. So Juventus really played with only two midfielders, which was McKenny and Rabio, uh, but they also had Aaron Ramsey on the field. So Aaron Ramsey, you know, pretty much throughout his entire career has been, what you'd call, I guess, the central midfielder. He's, he's not really a cam. He's not really a center defensive mid. But in this game, he played kind of on the left wing and drifted in at times. Um, so that was really interesting. I wasn't expecting that. And even after the game, Andrea Pirlo kind of referenced that he has four midfielders. Um, so you'd have to think that's McKenny, Rabio, Arthur, and uh, Bentoncourt. And he feels that uh, most of them can only play with two of them on the field at a time, which I'm not exactly sure where he's getting that from or why he thinks that, but um, I think it'll just be interesting, you know, going forward, watching Juventus this season and how they play um, because several players were injured for this game. You know, Paul D Dybala did not play. Um, so I'm just curious to see kind of how uh, Pirlo sets his team up uh, going forward. If he's only going to play two midfielders, because uh, you know, Arthur and, and uh, Benton Core were kind of the two midfielders that were supposed to start this game, and they obviously did not. So uh, I think that's kind of who uh, McKinney's got to play better than, to be honest. And it looks like he did that today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you said, I was going to quickly add, I mean, um, you know, he certainly has a lot of competition, especially if that's kind of how Pirlo views it. And kind of interesting take with Aaron Ramsey there, um, you know, being more, uh, more in the flank and cutting in. Uh, it's kind of intriguing. I know we were talking about that off camera yeah. a little bit. And when you said that, I was I was kind of thrown off and still stuck in my head. That just seems odd to me. But again, I know Pirlo yeah. has methods. Um, you know, obviously a new manager, but you know he has uh, you know his, his backroom staff with them and going over tactics and things like that. So it's just a new era for Juventus too. I mean, the players that some of these players that they brought in, uh, like you mentioned Arthur before, and and uh, obviously Pirlo being new to the helm and. I think Juventus is at a point where they're, they're dominating their league and, and having some troubles in the Champions League, and they're just looking to to revamp it almost, um, you know, to kind of take that next step where I wouldn't even say PSG, they were right there, but where PSG <laughs> was in that lull mm -hmm. where they, you know, would get certain way in the Champions League, dominate domestically, and and now almost made it. But, um, you know, I think they're trying to, trying to get that way. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely what they're trying to do. Um, 
I, I mean, Inter is going to give them a run for their money this season. They've got a really oh, good yeah, with Antonio Conte at the helm. So I think they got to be careful in how they play. They can't really experiment too much. Um, so that's the only thing that kind of concerns me about what Pirlo is doing to start the season. Because obviously I think, in my opinion, uh, the biggest thing for Weston McKinney this season is, you know, getting that championship experience, uh, working with world-class players like Ronaldo, uh, Chiellini, uh, Bonucci, Dybala, and just getting that uh, culture, that winning culture ingrained in him. So if they don't win Serie A this season, I think that's going to be uh, very disappointing uh, from our standpoint for Weston. But uh, yeah, definitely something to watch, you know, going forward, how they'll, how they'll play and how Weston fits into that. Uh, keep your eye on that. So with that being said, now let's head over to another USMNT midfielder, and that's uh, Tyler Adams. So Tyler Adams played... Uh, started and played all 90 minutes for Leipzig uh, this week. And that was in their, uh, what was it, Pat? 3-0? Three 3-0 nil? Three nil win? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, uh, or 3-1 win, excuse me. Um, I had it written in my notes wrong, over mine. So, uh, yeah, Tyler in this game played a little bit of a different position than we saw last week in the DFB Pokal, where he was dropping super deep in between the center backs. Didn't really Not do that quarterback, Austin. <laughs> Yeah, that quarterback position, like Julian Nagelsmann said, uh, didn't really do that too much this week, uh, but did do a good job controlling possession for for Leipzig and kind of setting the tempo for them. Um, just like Gio Reyna uh, and his great passing performance, Tyler did something very similar. Um, so Tyler went 78 for 82 passing. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, Pat, there wasn't too much to say in this game. Um, it was just a very good professional clean, um, you know, midfield performance. I think Tyler did what was asked of him, um, helped out defensively at times and, you know, was able to, to win the ball back. Like we've come accustomed to seeing him do. And then, like I said, just did a really good job kind of linking play and being, um, you know, a constant outlet for players when they got, got in trouble and just was able to kind of, um, you know, start plays from the back, so to speak. I know he didn't really, uh, you know, have any like pass to assists or assists, but he did a really good job kind of starting playoff. So yeah, that's kind yeah. of the, the brunt or I guess the, the bulk of what I have on Tyler. I think, you know, the, the injury to Conrad Lamer is kind of a blessing in disguise because it's really gotten him, uh, you know, a position uh, that he can, you know, take and, and kind of win um, for himself. Uh, something that we didn't really, or that he didn't have an opportunity to do last year because he was injured. So now that I think he's, he's, you know, been able to get on the field and play in front of Julian Nagelsmann more, I think, you know, he's really going to take hold of this position and uh, I think it'll be his to keep for the long run. Yeah. I couldn't agree more um, the way you put it. And it just seems like this year and, and again, injuries are awful, but um, that's, that's how a lot of young players and players kind of moving from teams get their chances. Um, when you look just historically, almost every player, um, you know, where that, that scenario comes about and they get their moment. And it just seems like, like you said, he's just really carving out his position. And, and we saw him similar to, you know, not as drastic as McKinney playing a bunch of different roles, but, uh, you know, Tyler is a, a work horse that, uh, you know, that, that, that mentality where he'll do anything, give anything for the team and play his hardest and play his heart out. And you could see that even when he was on an outside back or in a midfield role, but it seems like the way that it's the team's kind of shifted there and, and, and where he's carving out, um, you know, this opportunity, um, you know, with the injury there, Lamer and, and where he's kind of playing deeper, but also kind of propelling the team forward and kind of being that callous and engine from, from the back almost, um, I, I think is a really intriguing role. And, and I think, like you said, uh, it's his for the taking in the long run, I, you know, just in terms of, um, you know, getting his chances now. And he's, he's a player that um, obviously you'll have your bad games once in a while, but his, his energy in everything that he gives his effort level will always be there. So just for the same reason as you, he'll definitely keep that. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't, couldn't really say anything else more. I think, yeah, we've seen so much from him already. And I just think it's really up to Julian Nagelsmann to see it now from him. Um, and I think that's that's what's happening right now. So with that being said, Pat, I'm going to throw it back to you for another player who's got a big decision on his mind. I guess his second big decision. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, it seems like uh, he's he's always uh, in, in the tabloids here, uh, the soccer tabloids. for The some, good tabloids. The good tabloids for some serious decisions here. And now... Uh, for not just country, but for club now. 
um, where it's uh, Serginho Dest um, in Ajax. So uh, obviously with Bayern Munich and Barcelona right on the doorstep, um, you know, both kind of knocking, maybe one on Monday, the other on Tuesday. <laughs> Um, you know, it's up to him when he'll answer that door. But uh, just to go to, you know, his game recently here, Austin Quick, um, he didn't start um, for Ajax's 3 nothing win against uh, Walwick there and, and did sub on in, I think, the 78th or 79th minute, um, finishing out the contest. So you could kind of see that. He's, he's been on the bench here now, and um, usually that tends to be the, the sign um, that we can all see with rumors and, and transfers circulating that, um, you know, I feel like we can both almost agree that, you know, this week uh, we could see some developments there in terms of where he goes. I know um, uh, in terms of my preference, uh, you know, I, I like the Bayern situation a little bit okay. more in terms of where they're at, um, you know, club wise, uh, just the strengths they have and how they play their, their football. And, and with the opportunities there, um, obviously some movement there being a, uh, obviously, there's Pavard, but um, having having kind of Kimmich fill that that role that Thiago had possibly, and and uh, again seeing the kind of success of uh, you know fellow uh, you know Concacaf player there, David, <laughs> on the other side, yeah. um, I think Des would it'd be a very good good fit, and just again a great team to kind of grow and develop his talents. Where Barca does seem again historic club, you know, great great team with with Messi and company, but their situation right now is a little. Uh, dire but yeah i want to get your thoughts on it yeah it's really interesting because any other time than now uh barca would definitely have more weight i would say um than byron but it's really at the moment byron's you know the best team in the world in in my opinion so yeah it's tough i i I think you said it best pat uh byron are in a good position right now they definitely have a need for dust um I, i don't know if he'll get starting minutes um and, and it seems like at Barca, he may get starting minutes. Um, it pretty much, you know, their move for Dest hinges on Nelson Semedo getting sold. So if that happens, then you still have Sergio Roberto, um, who could play right back, um, that I think people are forgetting about. But uh, it sounds like Dest would be kind of their only replacement for him. And uh, it, it seems like playing time would be easier to come by at Barca. But yeah, Pat Barca are just not in a great place. It seems like Messi's going to leave next year. I, I I think something, you know, would have to really change for that to uh, not hold true. And I just don't want him to go to that team. I think, you know, uh, getting into a situation situation like that could really jade a player uh, this young. And uh, yeah, Byron, I think he'll still get enough playing time to develop. So I'm I'm Team Byron. I'm also. I guess impartial to the Bundesliga too. So, <laughs> right, right. It's almost uh, like a love hate where, uh, obviously, with the Dortmund side, but just covering the Bundesliga as a whole and, and you know, being in and out in the Bundesliga. Yeah, so. it'd, be, it'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> but um, yeah, I wanted to quickly say too, Austin, just uh, it is strange because I know even you mentioned that, that he seems to be favoring uh, Barcelona. And obviously, right. um, this yeah. is a period where Barcelona. It has been so stable with Messi and I don't even want to say stable in the fact, you know, they haven't had that champions league success in a while, but you know, it's still Barcelona and just dominating their league and, and uh, obviously being up there uh, with Madrid day in and day out and, and going far in the champions league, but with Messi's future uncertain, this just seems like a new, very dangerous, uncertain era for Barca uh, where I, I don't even want to say more of the safer choice uh, seems to be, which is just strange to see, say is, is with uh, Bayern Munich, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. You, know, and, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, you'd be saying Barca, Barca. But again, I, I still feel like both of these moves are, are just a fantastic, uh, you know, feat to, to where Des has come and, and his rise in the years here, and and testament to all of his hard work. So we'll just kind of have to see. I know there's been some some questions on his valuation, um, some of the holdup there. I think on transfer market, it's nineteen point eight, almost at that twenty million mark. So. Um, be curious to kind of see where he ends up, Austin. Yeah, and I, I think we're both kind of in agreement. He's not going to stay at Ajax, right? right. <laughs> it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So, uh, yeah, I, I think as early as this week, Pat, you could definitely hear some news. Um, it sounds like Semedo needs to be sold before he makes his decision, and I guess Barca then come in for him, and I guess he, he's waiting to see what their offer is. But, um, yeah, I, I do think it's going to – I don't think it's going to drag out as long as, as we're expecting. I know it's drug out pretty much all summer, but 
I do think uh, a decision will be made here fairly soon, and I'm I'm excited for it. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah, like you said, um, just to see him. Um, you know, had another a, American. Like, yeah, had another American. Club. I mean, I actually big club, but yeah, it's unreal. We're we're talking about. Yeah, even from Ajax and then, you know, potentially Bayern, Juventus, you know, Chris Richards over there. Um, right. You know, we have Adams, Leipzig, all these players, man. It's just exciting to see, um, you know, the the prospects really rising to the occasion and, and not, not even really prospects anymore, almost uh, starlets in their own. So, uh, yeah, excited for Serginho, Austin. Yeah. I know uh, we have another player that uh, you know, looks to be kind of, you know, hopefully trending in that right direction depending <laughs> on his club situation here. Yeah, maybe you'll have some uh, West McKinney luck and get to, uh, <laughs> Paris Saint Germain or something like that, PSG. But that would be Josh Sargent. So Josh uh, started for Bremen this past weekend, uh, played 90 minutes in their 4 1 loss to Hertha. And Pat, we were so excited to see uh, if Bremen could do better right. last season. We thought their preseason form was going to help them to start the Bundesliga. And they look just as bad as they did last year. <laughs> so uh, luckily they didn't look as bad, I guess, as Schalke in their first game, uh, who lost 8-0 to Bayern. But uh, definitely not a great, great start to the season for, for Josh and Bremen. Um, so what was really disappointing, and I, I know we've talked about this a little bit last year, but uh, Josh has kind of played in several different areas for Bremen. Um, they really like to play a front three uh, that's kind of Chlor- Florian Kofeld's system. And uh, Josh has really played on the left, on the right, and also a striker in that system. Uh, this game, it changed a little bit. So in attack, it seemed like they were playing a 4-3-3 with Josh on the left. And then when uh, Hertha had the ball, they kind of shifted into what was a, like a 4-4-2 with Josh now playing like, as a left midfielder. Um, which is a little bit different than we've really ever seen Pat. Um, he's never really been back that far and uh, definitely did a lot of tracking back defensively. I mean, you know, Bremen don't keep the ball much uh, as it is, but in this game, he really got deep and uh, it, it just was not his position. It's, it, you know, he's not a defender and he's not a, a wide midfielder even. Um, so that was really concerning and something I think we're going to have to keep our eyes on. I hope that doesn't, Continue, but um, just Bremen have so many strikers that uh, it just seems like they're playing the wrong system. And uh, it seems like Josh won't be the number nine for them, uh, which is really unfortunate. So uh, that was something I took from this game. Uh, Also, it wasn't Josh's day either uh, because he basically led to uh, Berlin scoring the first goal. Um, So Josh was uh, a little late to react on a corner kick uh, in the first half. And uh, kind of was late to arrive to his man and uh, his man scored, you know, the first goal of the game. So that was disappointing. Um, But yeah, I mean, it it didn't get much better from there. Uh, Josh didn't uh, get any opportunities to score in this game. Um, I I don't think he really, I I know he didn't take a shot. I'm pretty confident in saying that, but there wasn't even really any moments, Pat, where he was uh, really in a position to score. So it was just not a, not a good start to the season, unfortunately, after Last week too. We not at all. Be. <laughs> almost like we were, uh, you know, wishful thinking there, and uh, almost too hopeful for what we saw earlier. But um, yeah, you know, while you were kind of you know, going over the now, I was just looking up quick uh, some uh, translations, I believe, from uh, you know one of the MLS accounts on, on Twitter there, and it looked like some of the Bremen fans were also uh, very irritated in terms of where Sargent was playing and some of their formation yeah. and tactics where. Um, you know, one fan even said Sargent's playing somewhere in the left. Looks like a Christmas tree formation. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, why our, our, you know, striker has to work his way out in the midfield and kind of playing almost, like you said, left wing or left midfield, left wing back type role where just, just very odd and, and just not a recipe for success or a formula for success. I think, um, you know, Florian Kofel is just trying anything he can, different tactics. And um, <laughs> I, unfortunately, just I know you obviously have – have followed the, the situation a little bit more and more in depth in terms of the Bundesliga, but um, it just seems like, uh, you know, either he's got to go or, uh, you know, management's got to make some drastic changes because they're, uh, they're headed down uh, another treacherous path, um, you know, for this year. Yeah. And I should say Josh did get a shot off. I, I wasn't sure if he did or not, but he did get a shot off. Um, so definitely want to say that that doesn't help too much, but <laughs> to go, 
on further, I'd be, yeah, Florian Kofeld just, it, it seems like he's trying to play a system that doesn't fit his players that he has at the club. Uh, he's literally got like four or five strikers that are out and out number nines. They're not wingers. They're not players that can really, um, you know, exchange out onto the wing and kind of come inside. They're, a lot of their strikers are, are literally, you know, number nine poacher type strikers. And I think that's what Josh is. And unfortunately, he just hasn't been able to play there consistently. Um, he's played a few games at that number nine position, had a few substitute appearances, but, you know, it, it's not been his normal position for, for Bremen. So I think at the end of the day, you know, I guess we'll see how the season goes. It could always get better, but I, I think he's going to really have to just make a decision here in the future. Uh, and, and maybe, you know, the situation Bremen finds themselves in, if they get, you know, relegated or something like that, uh, it, it, it might force them to, move, you know, leave the club and, and uh, you know, look to other opportunities because he's not going to develop as a striker if he's playing as, you know, like you said, right. wing back. That's just right. not productive to his development as a player. Um, so I, I, I hope it doesn't come to that. And I hope he can find success in Bremen. Cause it seems like he really likes the city, he likes the, the club and the fans. And um, he hasn't really lost that, that spirit for the, the team yet. But at the end of the day, you can only be so loyal and uh, you know, it might be, might be time soon, Pat, to, to kind of look for other opportunities. Right. And so I guess my thoughts are, is a, uh, is it a mid table uh Bundesliga team potentially? Yeah. Um, you know, if if it is in fact that Werder can't kind of put it together here and um, you know, just it just seems like sometimes you need a coaching change and maybe that'd be beneficial and they, they stay up and there's a change and manage right. with some new ideas. Um, but in a case of another scenario, is there, you know, a few other clubs maybe um that you have in mind or, or even maybe uh a club out outside of uh, Germany, but it does seem like uh, staying in the Bundesliga would be his best bet. Yeah, I definitely think he's got the skill to do that. And and that's the thing I've been most impressed with him, especially at the end of last season. Uh, he's He's got ball skills and he's got a uh, pretty good holdup play. Uh, so, so with that being said, I think it's a similar situation to what Wes McKinney faced last year. I think he's a pretty good player. I don't think he's, as polished as McKinney was um, for Schalke, but he's definitely a player that excels and you can still see that even in this crappy situation that he's in. So I do think, you know, it, it's not a case of him. I, I even saw on Twitter someone saying maybe he should go down to the two bonus league. Like I, I think that's below him as crazy as that might sound. Um, I, I think he's a higher level prospect than that. And I think he's got more talent than, than that. And I think that would just would be a, kind of an unproductive move for him and, and kind of take his career back a step. So I think, yeah, if you can f find a team that has interest in, you know, the mid table um, in the Bundesliga, you know, you said, Pat, I think off air, uh, maybe the air to VC, which I, I don't know. I'm, again, I, I think he can play for a mid to high tier Bundesliga club. I really do think he has that talent even right now. Um, he just needs to score some and, and kind of, uh, maybe get uh, more refined on that end of things. But uh, yeah, I think any club that would, you know, uh, give him an opportunity to play the number nine, you know, striker position um, is the club he should go to. I don't think he should, he should definitely not go to a team that thinks he's a winger or anything of the sort. I guess that's my, my stance on him. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. I think uh, like you said, he just needs to, you know, he is that he is who he is where, you know, he's right. that poacher in that one who just needs to get in that rhythm and, you know, score a few goals. He's had a few uh, free beef. Uh, I can't talk right now. A, fr <laughs> uh, a few brief stints where he's had a few goals, but n none of that where, you know, you see some of those players really catch fire and it's like maybe six, uh, six goals in like four or five games or, you know, something along that sort where he gets on a run like that. Um, and, and unfortunately right. with the way that Werder, uh, Brennan plays and just the opportunities that that he's given, which are very limited. I don't think we'll see you know that high production just in terms of their their team as a whole. Yeah, it's it's really desolate. Uh, <laughs> I could go into it more, but I think we're, we should we should leave that here for today. So yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on Josh. Uh, we still obviously believe in him. We think he's very talented, but uh, Bremen, what are you doing, man? <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Come on, Brevin, get get better. 
So with that being said, now let's head over to Quick Kicks. All right, guys, it's that time of the show. I know it's my favorite time. I hopefully know it's yours as well. Definitely my favorite time. Definitely Austin's. <laughs> None other than Quick Kicks. So you could test Dwayne Miller. It's out to the over the wall. So to start quick kicks, we have Reggie Cannon. So Reggie uh, started and played all 90 minutes uh, for Boa Vista in their 3-3 draw this weekend. So good to see Reggie uh, get on the field and, uh, yeah, debut in, in Portugal. That's awesome. And uh, Anthony Robinson uh, over in Fulham, Austin, uh, I think it was early last week, involved and started and played the 90 there in Fulham's one nothing win against Ipswich Town. Um, so it's great to see him in the second round of the FL Cup, get some action in the win. Yeah, good to see him on the field. And uh, Chris Richards, it was also good to see on get on the field. And he subbed on and played the final 18 minutes for Bayern's full team uh, in their 8-0 win over Schalke. So uh, that's great. And then the next day, he started and played all 90 minutes in Bayern 2's 2-2 uh, draw. So, uh, yeah, we got to keep our eyes on Chris. Hopefully it's a, a big season for him. Yeah, that's exciting, man. Another, another player making waves at a top-level club. And uh, again, heading over to England, uh, the international Indiana Vasilev, Indy, is heading to uh, League One side Burton Albion. Um, so that'll be uh, interesting, a season-long loan from Aston Villa, and just great to get first-team action and playing time. So, uh, you know, I think it's a very solid move. Yeah, yeah, I think it's good because, uh, yeah, it seemed like he was always going to be on the bench for, for Villa, although they did sign some new players, so maybe that uh, that run would have end, ended. So, yeah, good to see that there. And uh, we have Emmanuel Sabi next, who started, uh, played 89 minutes, and scored a goal for Odense Bold Club in their 1-1 draw with Norchiland. So good to see Sabi back on the score sheet and uh, taking the life in his new club. Yeah, we like to see that. I might have to uh, you know, cop one of those uh, jerseys <laughs> out there, the Odense BK. And uh, yeah, okay. again, be, and uh, heading over to uh, Young PSV uh, with some of our uh, boys here, uh, Richie Desma and Chris Gloucester. We'll start with Richie, where you know he captained the young PSV side and, and scored a second goal of the season, a 2-1 loss, unfortunately, to FC Eindhoven. But nonetheless, it was a pretty strong performance from Richie. Uh, he's had last four games, two goals and an assist. And moving to uh, Gloucester quickly, uh, he started and played the full 90. So nice to see uh, them get minutes under their belt. Yeah, yeah, definitely good to see for both of them. And moving over to Wolfsburg, we have Brian Keo and Michael Edwards. Uh, so Keo started and scored uh, while Michael Edwards came on in the 20th minute for Wolfsburg 2 in their 3-2 win this weekend. So great to see Keo uh, taking the life in Germany uh, very quickly and always good to see, you know, Edwards come on the pitch. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, some exciting developments with the Wolfsburg boys. Um, and uh, now heading back to the Netherlands uh, with Young Ajax and Alex Mendez. Uh, starting to play the 90 and, and uh, win against go-ahead Eagles there. Um, he did provide an assist, um, but also gave away a penalty at the end of the game. Uh, they didn't convert it, mm -hmm. uh, go at Eagles, but um, nonetheless, it's, it's good to see Alex uh, contribute there and get some uh, minutes. Yeah, yeah, it was a nice pass that I saw on uh, Twitter as well. So, yeah, good to see. And going back to Germany, we have Evan Rotundo, who continues his hot form, uh, scoring a hat trick for Schalke's U17s in their 7 0 win. So good to see uh, Evan get back on the score sheet yet again. The goal scoring machine. And uh, again, going to England here at Derby County and Dwayne Holmes, unfortunately, has been out with a minor uh, thigh injury there picked up during the first game of the season. But looks like he is set to return uh, early this week to a Derby County's practice. So hopefully we'll see him on the field soon. Yeah, that's good to hear. Uh, it seemed like something happened too where he got into – uh, kind of a Twitter argument or something um, with some guy. I guess he didn't get into it. Some guy kind of called him out, and uh, it was a really unfortunate situation. So uh, take a little look at that on uh, Twitter as well. And moving over to uh, Germany, we have Malik Sonogo. So uh, Malik scored a hat trick, like Evan Rotundo, uh, in Union Berlin's U-17s win. So uh, good to see you know two Americans in the U-17 league there in Germany uh, scoring hat tricks. 
Yeah, that's not an easy feat. So uh, more hat tricks to Marrier and uh, going to League One here with uh, Lynn and Gooch, Gucci Bros, and um, where right. he uh, scored in Sunderland's two nothing win at Oxford United. So uh, it's nice to see him kind of score there um, and double the lead there. Um, and then hopefully, you know, he seems like he's sticking strong with Sunderland until he's they Sunderland until he dies. Exactly, like the Netflix documentary. <laughs> yeah, he just loves all that camera time. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then we have Nick Giacchini. So Nick started and only played the first half in Khan's uh, 0-0 draw. So hopefully we see a little bit more from uh, Nick next week. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Johan Gomez, Austin, for uh, FC Porto B there. Um, you know, yesterday they, win, they won 4-1, and uh, it was nice to kind of see, uh, you know, Gomez there uh, pick up a goal. Um, and it was, you know, great control, a nice flick for a nice finish. Um, but, yeah, a solid win there and, and great to see him, uh, you know, starting strong over there in Portugal. So that's it for episode today, guys. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel down below. And don't forget, uh, I know Austin did this part last week, but we have Instagram, Twitter, uh, and all that social media content going out. So just not only check out our, our post there, but stories, we're posting that as well with all these exciting developments going on. Yeah, yeah, there's been a lot of news to, you know, keep updated on. So definitely check those out. We're also available in podcast form now as well. So uh, that's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. So make sure you check us out there. Uh, give us a review. And uh, yeah, that's that's all for uh, this episode, Pat. Another another great week. Yeah, another great week, Austin. I mean, now we're talking, uh, you know, Juventus, we have Chelsea, you know, potentially another... Uh, Bayern yes. or, or Barca and, and even, uh, you know, Richards there at, at Bayern and all these top clubs, Austin, almost seems like, uh, you know, we have that golden generation, uh, you know, now proving <laughs> themselves and uh, you know, we're almost there to that goal. That's right. And that goal is one day we will win the World Cup.